What's up, Bulldogs? All right, this video is a video to help me make a video. So I'm working on a longer, more documentary style video or essay, I say essay video, on my other channel, the new Bulldog Mindset official channel where I do the highly edited videos. And I thought I would kind of riff on some ideas here on how to become a man in order to get my brain flowing and thinking about how I would answer this question. And what I found was that, I mean, unfortunately, well, unfortunately or fortunately, I, I suppose, a lot of my best content, my best answers come out from someone asking me a question. If you've ever been in the Bulldog Mindset membership, if you're in the membership, if you're ever on the live streams there, that's where the best stuff is for sure. Because when people ask me questions, I mean, that's what, you know, that's what I do, right? I... I coach. I'm a coach. That's essentially what I do. I, a teacher, you could say a shaman, right? That's I, I help people to figure themselves out and to, to look deep and, and, and answer questions. You know, I analyze the, the things. And so a lot of times what's interesting is when I'm just trying to create a video, when I'm just trying to create a video on a topic, it's different. I am unable to. I have to think about what am I going to say and... How should I structure this thing as opposed to just giving the answer? When someone asks me a question, I have a ton of things to say. I can talk about that all day long. My passion is there. I, I feel a lot more energized and I'm able to think a lot more deeply. So it, it's weird though, because it's almost like, okay, John, well, do you need a question to prompt you? But sometimes if I just give the question myself, it doesn't, it doesn't work so well. So I need you to give me a question. <laughs> but that's what I'm sort of trying here. So I'm imagining in my head that you, you just asked me, how do I become a man, John? And so I might ask you for some clarification on that. Well, what do you mean? Like, tell me more about your struggle with becoming a man so that it feels more like a real question. And maybe I would pose this question to my younger self and he would say something like, well, you know, you know I, I see all these other guys walking around and, and to me they they look like men they, they feel like men but I just don't feel it I still feel like I'm a boy I feel like these guys are men but but I'm not I'm, I'm struggling with women I'm struggling with with my confidence I don't I don't feel like I am just the man I want to feel like a guy that people look up to that that's strong, that's powerful, that's cool, you know, <laughs> that's what I want to do, I want to be that, that guy, I want to be the man, I want to be, I want women to be attracted to me, I want men to value me, respect me, I want to have accomplished something in this world, I want to feel like I walk into a room and I know that I'm the man, people are looking, they're, they're excited to see me, they're like, who's that guy, right, so, Okay, so let me tell you. Let me tell you how you would do this. How does it, how do you become a man? So, so first of all, before we even talk about how to become a man, we need to understand what it is you're trying to become because you can't become something that you don't know what it is. And so what is it to be a man? And I could give you my essay on what it is to be a man, but let me give you sort of the short idea of what it is to be a man. Okay, so, so first of all, a man is not something that you're born with, it, it is made. Women are, are born, men are made. And so it is something that you must become. I've always said that there's three sexes. There is woman, boy, and man. And I think that's important because the distinction is that each one of them is dealt with s separately and has the different a, a separate rules for life, right? So how do you make that transition from boy to man? Well, again, understanding what a man is, right? So a man really, if I were to boil it down, is a person who, who, who makes their own judgment calls in life and abides by those, who is able to essentially not only take care of themselves, right, to sustain themselves, but to sustain other people is a net benefit to the people around them, right? I won't say society because fuck society. We don't care about society. That's, <laughs> you don't have no obligation to society, but the people around you that, that when you are in a tribe, when you are in a family, when you are in a unit, that you not only are able to sustain yourself, but you're able to provide more than, than that, right? So, so being a man really is this idea of self-efficacy, 
self-reliance, right? Having a, 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 a complete reliance on your own judgment. You make this, you think about a thing and you decide what it is. You set the direction. You don't need to follow. You don't need to, to get approval from other people. You don't need validation. You, you have that yourself. Like, you know what the answer is, right? The man, when you think about the man, right? The man that you want to become, right? Because you asked me this question, <laughs> right? It, it is the man that people look up to. They're looking to him for direction, they're looking to him for approval. They're looking to see what he does. He's got the answers. He knows what to do. He's going to take action. He's going to solve this problem. He's going to make sure that things are taken care of. That's what it is to be a man, right? And so if we understand that aspect of what it is to be a man or masculinity, right, then I think we can start to approach the question of, of how to become that, right? And again, just to give a few more notes on this, you know, what, what is it to be a man? What is masculinity? right? You can get an image in your head. And that's, that's what you should aim for is first, you have to have that vision, that image in your head and that vision of you, right? Of who you should become. Uh, you know, what, what is it really like to be masculine, right? Think about that. Think about that. Again, we're using the terms, we're, we're interchanging the man and masculinity. But think about what does it mean to be masculine, right? What, what does it mean? How does it look like to be masculine, right? There, there's some level of emotional mastery there, right? You're, you're not just going to be swept away by your emotions, right? You're analytical. You're making decisions. You're, you're, you have ambition. You're moving forward. You're, you're taking the lead. You're dominant, right? You're not submissive. You're dominant. You're decisive. These are the, these are the things. Strong. We could add strength in there. We can also add some aspects of self-consciousness and vulnerability in there as well, because you do have to be self-aware to a degree. You have to have discipline, right? So these are kind of all the components that we can, we can throw in there. It's interesting on my other channel, I'm going through Seneca's letters to Lucilius and in one of them, he's talking about virtues, right? And he's talking about, we know which virtues are better and are they the same or, you know, are they all to be desired? And, and essentially you know, what it really comes down to is that all virtue is one. There, there, there's different aspects, there's different things like bravery and steadfastness and you know, valor, you know, whatever you could, you could say, the, these different virtues that, that you have and different people call them different things at different times in, in history, but they all come from one. They all come from one source. And if you have that one, you have them all. You know, you can have aspects of other things, but it's the same thing with, with masculine, like being a man, it's it's one thing, and all of these things will flow from that. But we can work our way up to, to become those things. So, getting back to the question, how do you become a man? What are the steps that you need to do? Well, again, looking at me asking this question, you you asking this question to me, how can I become a man based on what you've told me? Here's what I would say. All right. So first of all. You've got to get discipline because without discipline, it's just not going to be possible because you have to be able to forge yourself. You have to forge a new identity. When I go back and I look at myself and you can see video clips of me in the past when I was not so masculine, when I was not so manly, I, I was not disciplined. I, you can tell my voice was much different. I, the way I carried myself was, was much different. But in order to make those changes that needed to occur, I needed to have the discipline to carry out the plan, right? I needed to have the discipline in order to get to the gym, to build my body up, to go and run, to, to endure the kind of pain, the hardship, the trials that you're going to have to go through that are going to strengthen you and make you stronger, right? To, to be a man is to be strong. There, there's a, a huge aspect of that. So for me, myself, I had to go through a lot of trials. I had to learn a lot of things. So it starts with discipline, right? So right now, if you're falling into the boy category, which it's okay, 
it's okay to admit that. Maybe you're somewhere in the transition, it's fine. But if you don't truly 100% feel like a man, let's be honest here and let's let's start with that. So you need to develop discipline. Now, how do you develop discipline? Well, <laughs> you do hard things that you don't want to do, right? Discipline is doing what you need to do even if you don't feel like it, right? And, and so how, how do you do that? One, one of the best ways that I have found to develop discipline is through physical discipline. Now, why do I say that? Because it's something that's straightforward that you can go out and do and you can see the results of it and it's unambiguous, right? Because if I say, let's just develop discipline in terms of doing your work or controlling your emotions and and things like that and, and carrying out your, your plans, it's a lot harder to judge and it's, it's a lot harder to to see those things. But if I say I'm going to do this running plan, right? That's why running long distance running is actually quite a, a good thing, I, I think, for this, right? Then I have to follow this plan. I know if I did it or I didn't do it, right? If I go to the gym and I have a gym workout and routine, if I have a diet, right? These are the things that are going to help you develop both discipline and mental toughness, which are, are both two critical skills. Okay, so you've got the discipline aspect of it, right? So what I want you to do right now is I want you to have a plan. What is your physical plan for your body, for your workouts? You, you have to have some kind of workout routine that is an actual plan. It's not just I go to the gym when I want to or I take a few runs. You need an actual routine. Like today, I will be running three miles. I'm, I'm training for a half marathon, right? I re-implemented this in my life because it was starting to fall off. But you, you, you need to have a plan. So come up with a plan, first of all. all right. Now let's talk about what, what else you need to do in order to become a man. What, what are the, the steps here? I'm kind of throwing this out in, in no particular order because my thoughts are not organized on this. this is the, the purpose is to organize my thoughts. But one thing I will say is that you need to do a large degree of introspection. What this means is that you need to look and say, where am I honestly right now? You need to evaluate yourself. In the Bulldog Mindset membership, I have an exercise in there where I detail this out. I call it the looking in the mirror exercise. What does this look like? It looks like literally stripping down naked, standing in front of a mirror, and making notes. Not judgments, but notes, observations. What does your face look like? Is your nose too big? Are your ears too big? Do you have a weak eye? Whatever it is, do you lack the facial hair that you would like? Do you lack hair on your head? Are you short? Are you tall? How's your muscularity? Are you fat? Are your arms big? Your chest? What are your strong points? What are your weak points? What are, what are the things that you notice physically about yourself? Okay, and you kind of write those things down. But then you take that same account and you do that psychologically, right? So you look at and say, honestly, am I a brave person? Am I confident? How am I with women? Would I go up and talk to a girl that I'm attracted to? Would I be afraid to do that? If I do go and talk to her, can I hold a conversation? Am I seeking validation from people? Am I seeking validation from women? Am I still a mama's boy? Am I still seeking the approval of my father? Do I, do I have intelligence? Do I have wisdom? You know, th these, these are the questions that you need to, to ask, right? All of these things. What, what, what kind of personality do you have? Do you, how are your emotions? Are you emotionally able to control yourself? Are you, do you fly off the handle? Do you get angry? Are you sad? Are you depressed? Are you, what are the states that you're in? You know, what are these aspects of yourself, of your being, as they are right now? A, a full account of these things, okay? Now, once you have a full account of these things, now you can look and you can decide what things you want to change. Because every single thing on this list, it's going to fall into three categories, okay? Change it. Accept it. Actually, let's just let's just say two. Let's just say two. Let's just say change it or accept it because that, that's really all that you can do. You know, we can throw in a third 
category there for kicking the can down the road or, you know, whatever. But l let's not even do that. Let's just say change it or accept it. And so every single one of these things, you're either going to change or accept. For example, your height, you're not going to change that. So you need to stop allowing it to penetrate your armor and to create a weakness in you. If you're shorter, that's fine. It's not going to change. So don't worry about it. There's no need to continue to worry about that. Because if you're not going to change something, then you not owning the thing is what's preventing you. It's one of the things that's preventing you from being a man because these insecurities are stopping you from having the confidence, from having the decisiveness that you need. It's making you seek validation. So I want you to go through that whole list. And then what I want you to do is I want you to pick the things that you can change and I want you to pick the top few and you want to work on those things one at a time. And don't even worry about all the other stuff. You're going to have a big list. You don't need to apply judgment here. We're not talking about are you good or bad. It's fine. It's just where you are. We need an honest roadmap to work from, an honest blueprint. And so you're going to work on really the top thing, maybe top two or top three things. Some of it's going to be physical. Some of it's going to be psychological. And as you work through these things and you check them off, the things that can be changed, you're going to reassess because you're going to find that other things are going to change when one thing changes. And that's how things work. You're going to find also when you start to discipline yourself in one area, you're going to find discipline in multiple areas. A lot of people find when they start working out, they start eating healthy. Not always, but these things end up being connected. Sometimes they end up working harder and they end up getting promoted at work and having more success in life because they are now changing one aspect of their life. And so you're going to change that, that thing. All right. And, and you should know, again, we, we talked about, we started off this conversation talking about what it is to be a man. So you know what you're aiming for. You know, you have this ideal in your head of who, of who you're going to be. And, and this is something that I did when I was very young that helped me to transform. It still was not the transformation into masculinity, but it was a transformation that I could see at that time. As I remember when I was in high school, Thinking one day, waking up and saying, why not me? Why are these other guys in school jocks and popular and I'm not? There's, there's nothing physically different about me, not really. Mentally, no, I'm smart. I am capable. So why, what is it? It's only a perception. There, there's nothing blocking me besides me taking the, those actions or believing myself to be that. And so I started pretending to be the person I wanted to be. I, but in order to do that, I had to envision who that man was. And I envisioned it in my head. And then I started being that. I started doing what he would do. <laughs> I started talking like he would talk. I started walking like he would walk. And it took some time, but I eventually, after playing that role for some time, became that role. And the same thing happened later in, in my life. You know, there is a whole phase, you, you, you've seen it on this YouTube channel, where I was into being a, a pickup artist, if you will. All right. And I had no real success with women <laughs> okay I had been married I didn't really have any I mean I'd never gone up and talked to a girl or, or anything like that and I just started I envisioned what this guy I wanted to be was I started acting like him <laughs> I started doing what he would do I started overcoming my fears I started going out and talking to women and pretty soon I was coaching guys on how to pick up girls. I was the coach. People were paying me thousands of dollars to take them to Vegas and show them how to do it. And I didn't know how to do it, but I figured it out because I pretended I played that role. And eventually I became the role and it became legitimate. It, it was not fake. It was legitimate. But that transformation happened because I first envisioned and then pretended, played the role. And that's how life is. We're all playing some kind of role. It's just that right now, the role that you're playing, this boy role, is the role that you think that you're supposed to be. And so you're just conforming to that role that you've already developed for yourself in your head. And you think that if you pretend, if you play some other role, that you're being fake, you're not being real. But that's not true at all. It, it's transforming who you become. So, continuing on, 
you've taken the account of things. You've decided the few things that you're going to change. So you work on those things. But let me give you some ideas, some hints, some things that are also going to help you along this path. Some of the things that you do need to work on and develop. So one of them we already talked about. I'm not going to beat a dead horse here. But it is important as a man to be able to go out and talk to a woman. You need to be able to cold approach, as we would call it. You might not think that's important, but it is because you have a fear of it. And if you don't have a fear of it, then just go and do it. And then you can check that off the list and you can say, John, see, I didn't even need to do this. And that's fine. That's great because you already got that aspect handled. But a lot of guys don't. And they think that they can do all kinds of things to get around it. I was just reading an email from a guy that was talking about how he's six foot tall. He's got a six pack abs and he's making six figures and he expected women to be all over him and they're not. And so he tried to do all of this other stuff in order to not face this fear of rejection. You got to face rejection. You have to face that fear. And, and the reason why, and the reason why I use this as such a important point, right? It's not to get you laid. That's not so important in life. I mean, it's great, but it's not so important. It's more of an ego boost. It's because it's about facing hard stuff and, and facing rejection. And if you're a man who can face rejection, if you can go out there and face that rejection, then you're not going to seek the validation of women and of people because you're used to not getting it. And that's okay. You're okay with that. So you have to face that. So I would recommend that you go and, and, and do that. Even if you don't learn the skill, even if you don't end up becoming good at it, become good at being rejected. That is a valuable skill. That's the more valuable skill, right? A lot of guys would even say, oh, John, I did, you know, hundreds of approaches or whatever, thousands of approaches. Or they'll say, well, if you're telling guys to go and talk to girls and they already have low confidence and then they get rejected more, then they're just going to have even less confidence. So it's actually going to hurt them. Okay, guys. You're, you're missing the point. The, the point is, is that you're facing the rejection to become inoculated against the rejection. The, the point is, is that this is not for them. It's for you. You go and do this in order to prove something to yourself. Because look, at the end of the day, you're the only one watching yourself. You're the only one who really matters. And that's the whole point of being a man is that to realize that you're the only one who really matters. It doesn't matter how other people view you. It matters how you view you. See, we, we've been conditioned by this modern world to pay attention to how, to how other people view us. And I'm not saying it's not important at all. I'm not saying our image and our brand is not important. But what I am saying is that we've been conditioned to value the values and estimations and judgments of other people and society above our own. And a man can never do that. If you want to transition from boy to man, you have to value your own judgment above all other people and everything else. You have to be the source. You have to be the king. I've talked about how you must metaphorically kill your father. What does that mean? It means letting go of his patriarchal or breaking free from his patriarchal dominance in your life. You take up the scepter. You become the king. You sit on the throne. You have your own kingdom. That's what it means. And you're not going to be able to do that if you're constantly allowing the judgments of other people to influence you if you're seeking that validation. Now, what else can we say about this? There's so many things. I would say that not only do you have to face that rejection, but you have to learn emotional mastery. One of the biggest things that separates boys from men is that boys can't control their emotions. I did a video on the other channel about the three levels of emotional mastery. You can watch that video. But I'll give you the basic idea of it, which is that 
there are three levels. The first level is wearing your heart on your sleeve. The second one is numb mentally or emotionally numb, zombie mode. The third level is feel the pain and keep on walking. You must progress to the third level. At the first level, you are literally just spewing your emotions wherever. You're just crying. You're just sad. A girl rejects you. You're heartbroken. You let her know. You write sappy love letters to, you know, these type of things. You whine, you complain. You get angry when someone makes you angry and you yell. Whatever it is, you throw a tantrum. You're emotional. You're feminine. At the second level, you've shut off the emotions. You're no longer feeling anything. You're, you're emotionally numb. You think you're tough. Maybe you have that macho man mentality. It's not it. That's, that's not it. That's not facing things. The third level, you've reopened. You feel the pain, you just like you did before in the first level, but now you keep on walking through the pain. You don't let it dictate your actions. This is really where you become stoic, all right, which is another aspect of masculinity, is stoicism, which is not suppressing your emotions. It's not expressing your emotions. It's processing them. It doesn't mean that you don't have emotions as a man. It just means that you handle them correctly. You don't let them take over your life. You don't let them control your actions. Now, this is very hard to do. I even struggle with this at times, especially when it comes to my romantic relationship. I can get overwhelmed. I can get to a point where I am not allowing my, I'm, not, I'm, I'm allowing essentially my emotions to dictate some of my actions and some of the words that I say. I have to be careful with that. But that is essential for you as a man. You have to learn that. Now, I, I would recommend reading some of the Stoic philosophers who are good at this. Seneca's Letters to Lysilis. I have another channel on that. I think you'd find a lot of value in that. So do that. Focus on that. Focus on learning how to process your emotions. Not to express them, not to repress them, but to process them. Let them happen. Let them be. But don't hold on to them. Don't hang on to them. Don't go into the river and let the river take you with it. Let, it ro let the river flow through you and come out the other end. What else? What else would I say that you need to do in order to be a man? How do you become a man? I'm trying to think back. I'm trying to think about what, what I did to become a man. I would say there, there's some aspect of it. You know, I, I can, we could talk about obviously the three fears that all men face, which I've talked about before, which is the fear of physical violence, the fear of not being a self-made man or you know, financial ruin, you could say, and the fear of women, of, of cold approach, right? So you need to conquer those things. The fear of physical violence, You've got to conquer that. that. That's really could encompass just fears in general. You have to conquer your fears. So let's put that aspect of it out there. A man must conquer his fears. He must have courage. Now, courage is not the absence of fear. It's the conquering of the fear. It means that where fear exists, action still exists. It's taking action despite fear. That's what courage is. And so... Again, we talked about that in terms of going and talking to girls that, you know, whatever that, you know, going and, and doing that thing. That's, that's, that's one aspect of it. But there's other aspects of it, right? There's a physicality aspect of it, which is getting in the ring. I, I don't think you're really going to become a man until you have come to terms with your own mortality and faced it. Because you do have to face it in life. You are going to die. I was just thinking about this last night in bed, <laughs> right? How bizarre that this is, that it will happen. It's scary. It's sad. We're fated for it. But you can face it at the very end or you can face it now. Face it now. That might mean going and signing up for kickboxing classes, Muay Thai or grappling or jujitsu or, or something and getting in the ring and and facing some kind of combat situation. Spar. Get hit in the face. You know what I mean? I'm not saying you have to become a boxer and get brain damage. <clears throat> but I am saying, hey, you got you to gotta push through this. And you, you got to actually 
experience this. Because it is about facing that mortality, knowing that you're, you're vulnerable. You could be hurt, but you can stand stronger. And, and one thing that you'll find is it's not so bad to get punched in the face. It's not so bad. It's not the thing that you feared, the physical violence. Again, I'm not saying that physical violence isn't bad, but it's not so bad. You will survive. You can take some hits as a man. And then there's that financial aspect of it, of being a self-made man is, is what I call it. You know, some people want me to water it down and say that you just make money, but that's not it. You, you just really won't feel like a man unless to some degree you're a self-made man. And it doesn't mean that you can't have a regular job. You don't have to become an entrepreneur necessarily. That doesn't, doesn't have to be your full-time thing, but you need to have something where you're making your own money, some kind of side hustle, some kind of business, some kind of thing or investments that you've done that you've put your hands into like real estate, something that is going to make you feel like you're not just given a handout. That you, Because again, the, the, the corporate world working for someone else, it's fine. I understand not everyone's going to be an entrepreneur, but it is still in a way psychologically a handout because yeah, you might have the skills and you might've learned some things and, and worked hard to get the job that you have, but you're, you're reliant on someone else. You're not self-reliant. Someone has to give you the paycheck. Someone has to offer you the job. Now, if you already have the skills to be able to make the money on your own and you take a job, that's different. But if you don't, then you know psychologically that you need someone else in order for you to financially survive. You can't do it on your own. Yeah. I, again, I, I'm not pulling any punches in this one. A lot of people say, oh, well, you can't give that message, John, because th that's just going to discourage a lot of guys who are working regular jobs. It's fine. Okay. My compromise is this, is build a side hustle. Want some help doing that? DM me on Instagram, the word freedom, and I'll help you. I've got a program f for doing that. But you, but you got to do that, right? And, and if you face those things, if you conquer those things, you'll be really close to being a man. I, I, I would say that you should be there at that point. The only remaining thing between you and stepping up and being a man will be this aspect of validation, which we, we've talked about a little bit, but let's just drill into that one more time. You cannot be seeking validation from other people. You, you've got to make some choices in life that are going to be hard choices. There's a book, a really good book, by Dr. Robert Glover called No More Mr. Nice Guy. You can't be a pushover anymore. You can't be a yes man. You can't avoid conflict. You have to make your own decisions. You have to stand by them, whether people support you or not and push forward. You can't be trying to get people to like you. You can't be trying to get their approval. You have to do what you believe is right. Now, how do you practice this? By, you practice this by saying no. You put yourself in these uncomfortable situations. When someone asks you to do something that you don't want to do, you say no. Someone asks you to go to a wedding you don't really want to go to, you say no. When your parents call you up and try to guilt you up, you say, no, I'm not going to do that. That's what you do. When your woman tells you that she wants something and you don't want to do that thing or you don't think it's the right choice, you tell her, no, we're not going to do that that way. That's not what we're going to do. You don't avoid those conflicts. But you have to put that into practice. And when you start doing those things, then yeah, you, you will develop a spine. You will develop a backbone, right? Dr. Orion Taravan, psych hacks, you know, what did he say about being a man? He said that there were two things. He said you have to have a spine and you have to have balls. I agree with that. You have to have a backbone. You can't be afraid. You can't back down. And you got to have balls, meaning you, you got to take action. You got to do bold things. You got to 
be willing to take some risks. Well, those are my thoughts. I was trying to think if there's more things that I have about this. And I, I mean, there's different ways to talk about this, but, but how to be a man, I would say those are the, are the, are the main things. You know, you should read a lot of books, obviously, because that will help you <laughs> to gain some wisdom, to gain some perspective. There's a lot of books I can recommend to you, of course, and, and, and I've recommended a lot of those books. But yeah, you, you, you've got to do those things. And and I would say even to, to stretch it a little bit further, you need to understand how to interact with women how to be a masculine in a relationship, how to be a man in a relationship. I think that's an important aspect of it. I won't go into the details of that, but I, I've talked about that in many other videos. And I think that's extremely important as well because a lot of men don't understand women. And especially when they get into a relationship context, they might be the man everywhere else, but they get into a relationship, a woman disrespects them. She doesn't treat them properly. And they don't know how to respond to that in the correct way that holds their frame, that keeps their emotions in check. And so they get sucked on that rabbit hole and they become emasculated in the relationship and they're no longer a man. They lose their manhood. <laughs> they lose their masculinity. That can happen as well. If you want more on this topic, obviously I'm going to do a YouTube video on the other channel that'll be much more concise and thought out than this, but these are my wild rambling thoughts about this subject. And then also you can check out the Bulldog Mindset membership. There's a link down below to join. You can also take the Bulldog quiz if you've been taking the Bulldog quiz and you can see what your score is. That'll give you an idea of where you're at. See you next time.